guys, welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be showing you our unit study for the week of Chile inspired things. So we're gonna be eating, all of our dinners are gonna be Chile inspired meals, as well as every day I've got a different sort of theme planned. We're gonna do it for lunch today, actually, instead of dinner, just because the kids are so excited to get started making the meals. So anyway, I'll show you each day. It's gonna be five day a week, so we'll do different activities for uh, each of the five days. And then I think next week I'll also include the grocery haul. Let me know in the comments below if that's interesting to you, if you wanna see what I picked up for ingredients for these meals, um, but other than that, I'll just show you the ingredients for each meal before I make it, and I'll show you sort of what I'm doing. By the way, I'm Cassandra, and my children are Alice and Tobias, and they are five and three, so technically Alice would be in senior kindergarten this year, and Tobias would be in preschool. So this is everything we're gonna need for our first day of the Chile unit study. So I got two books here about mummies because Chile has the oldest mummy in the world. And so we've got Skippy John Jones and then a Scooby-Doo book. They already have a Skippy John Jones, so they were excited to see another one. And then this toilet paper we're gonna use to wrap them up in mummies, as you'll see. So then I'll use this LeapFrog interactive map and I will get them to find Chile. Now we've been preparing for this for a while. They've been excited, so they already know where it is on the map, as you'll see, but uh, that should be fun. And that is our first day and everything we'll need. All right. That's good. They don't really want the This is Chile. That's good. Alice, can you find where we live first, please? Great. Now, where is Chile? Very good. So, where do we live? Good. And then, where's Chile? Good job. Yeah. You guys didn't know, but today is actually the mummy race. It's all falling over. It's all falling over. <laughs> And then you Oil. forgot the pepper. Pepper and lime. And half of the. And half of the onion. And we're making, what are we making? So papillas, I think. Yeah. For lunch. Do you want to have our day? Oh yeah, and this cilantro. Thank you, Alice. And also some cilantro. I just buy it and freeze it, so I just pulled out a bag of it. So I didn't show you, I added the flour to the bowl and then I cut in the butter. It just, the clip was shaky, so I didn't include it. But I've added some water now and Tobias is helping me uh, with this recipe. So he's stirring it up here. Now the recipe will be linked down below just in case you can't follow along with this tutorial. <laughs> and I uh, also, I won't show you every recipe. I'll just show you this one. This was by far our favorite of all the recipes we tried for Chile. So I wanted to just include a little demo of it for you. And it's something new I'm trying out, so <laughs> I'm uh, just getting used to it, so bear with me. So I'm just kneading the dough, and then I realized that it was too dry, so I had to add a bit more water. Uh, and then it was a perfect consistency. It was ready to set. Now I just covered it up for, I think it was 10 minutes after I was done kneading it. And I worked on the topping, which was the, I think it's called pico de gallo. So here I am chopping the onion. I know it's amazing that my knife skills are so good that this is fast for <laughs> This is like sped up so much. That's how slow I am and it still looks so slow. But anyway, so I just uh, dice up the onion and then I go ahead and dice up the little, what do you call them? Cherry tomatoes, I guess. They were a certain brand. I don't know, but I don't know if this is what made the topping so good. If it was this type of tomato, I don't know if it would have been as good with a regular tomato. I just found these really, really worked well. They were so delicious. So I diced up about half of the package of those, and then I went ahead and did my garlic here. Did this ever make me miss that pre-peeled garlic? That was so handy to have in the fridge. I used about half of that package before it went bad. I'm sure there was something I could have done to make it last longer, but I can't even imagine having pre-chopped garlic, how handy that would be. And you know what? I'm never going to buy it because I'll get so used to it, and I'll never go back to buying <laughs> regular garlic again. <laughs> But uh, it would really speed up the process if I had those convenient things because, like I said, I am not the fastest at cutting. 
Okay, so this is my frozen cilantro. I know it looks so disgusting once it's been frozen, but once I buy the entire thing of it, I never use it all. And so I feel like it's such a waste. And so freezing it works really well for us. And I honestly find it tastes the same. Like none of the taste is lost by freezing it. So anyway, all right. So now I'm going ahead and squeezing half of a lemon into the pico de gallo. And Tobias is again, such a good helper, helping me mix it up. So then I added some salt and pepper and just about to add some oil to it just a little bit and that will be the topping. So the dough is rested. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it up into eight pieces. The recipe makes eight, but I would definitely double it next time. My kids ate, I think three each. They loved it so much. And then uh, I think I had like one left over for Chris. I could have easily eaten a couple more. Uh, it was delicious, but you know, not the most filling. It's just bread and you know, the tomato topping. So especially because that's all we were having, this would be like a really good appetizer, I think. Uh, so here we are rolling up the dough balls. Tobias helped me. I thought he did a pretty good job. And then we just covered them up and waited until our oil was heated up to be able to fry <laughs> having them. a snack. But I also made them, uh, I wrote the word mummy and Alice copied it here. And then she drew this picture of a mummy and then copied it again. Just by herself. And then, Bice, is this your mommy? Mm. Is that three arms? The three arms! I didn't know if it was. Is this you writing of mommy? Very good. Look at those bumps for the M's. Very good, Bice. I love this mommy. We're just frying our first one. It looks like it's going well. Looks delicious. Tobias is rolling them out for me. So you're going to turn it now. Yeah, look at him. He's a pro. Oh my goodness. So, let's see how it turns out. Just a couple minutes per side. And then it should be done. So, what do you think, Alice? This is your second one? This is so good. It's so good. It really is amazing. It is so good. Vice is not, it's not so keen on the topping, but I see him adding it back on. So for today, we're going to be doing um, that Chile has those macaroni penguins. Now, I couldn't find books that were just about the macaroni penguins, so I just got regular penguin ones. This one's really cute, the lift and flap one. I can't remember if I showed you these yesterday. So I've got Scooby-Doo, Museum Madness, and Skippy John Jones and Mummy Trouble. They're both kind of me. I would choose some other mummy books next time. Um, and then I'll take you over... Here, got a little craft set up for them for the morning. So uh, it's just this little penguin. I'm not taking credit for this. I will leave the link down below um, to for the YouTube video on how to make this uh, cute little penguin guy. Uh, so what I did is I just I drew everything so that they could cut it out, and that would take a bit more time. Oh, I also need to put a glue stick there as well. But I'm gonna just put some scissors, and so that they will be able to make. The same penguin and then they'll do that while I'm making breakfast I love having something to occupy them in the morning while I'm making breakfast because I'm a bit slower to start the day and they're just like ready to go so it's nice to have something just prepared for them so I accidentally bought these bone-in skin on chicken thighs and Chris won't eat any brown meat basically or anything that's not white meat so I'm gonna have to find some uses for this so what I'm gonna do today is put a little bit of it in my instant pot I'm gonna put probably like two or three in there and then I'm going to make a broth to go with supper tonight the rice is I'm making Spanish rice um, and that's our sort of chile component <laughs> and so I need the broth from it to make the rice and then I'll also make a chicken salad for lunch because Chris doesn't eat that anyway. And then we can have that for a couple of lunches and then we can have the chicken to go with the rice tonight. And then I'll just pull out some chicken breast just for him for dinner. So that's what we're doing today. I'll just go ahead and show you how I make the broth. So I just put enough water in my Instant Pot to cover the chicken. Um, just covering it. I actually added too much and had to go back and dump some out. So I know it's strange, but this is everything I need. Um, but I do go ahead and add the onion peels just to give the broth some color. I add everything pretty much whole. So the garlic whole, I just break up the carrot, put in some onion, and then I just end up discarding the vegetables and extra stuff at the end. 
So some whole peppercorns, some salt, um, some bay leaves. I kind of just make it up every time almost to <laughs> see what I have on hand and throw it in there. Um, so that was some Italian seasoning. And as you can see, I'm not using any specific measurements. And it turned out really good and really tasty. So I'm just putting it in my Instant Pot on pressure cook. And I just looked up how much time I would need for the chicken. And there it is there. I just keep that little chart in my cupboard. It's pretty handy. Um, just taped on there. And so I'm going to go ahead and cook it. I'm like waiting to see how much time. Okay, 11 minutes. <laughs> Whatever I did, it worked. So 11 minutes on high. Tomorrow we're just going to be doing earthquakes because Chile has had the biggest or largest earthquake on the Richter scale or whatever. And so we're just going to look through this book um, of volcanoes and earthquakes because I couldn't find one just on earthquakes, but definitely it's a little old for my kids. But, um, you know, maybe we'll see some interesting things. I'll let them kind of point out what they want to know about and I'll read it with them. So today I'm going to be making steak sandwiches on these buns like I'll cut them in half and then put a steak on and top it so the toppings are like things like guacamole I'll just let everybody kind of pick and then just like vegetables like cooked green beans I'm cooking some carrots in there right now in the instant pot um, probably more for a side but you could put those on top probably just try like guacamole and then maybe some like uh, cooked spinach and stuff you have these like loaded steak sandwiches. So that's what we're doing for our meal today. Excuse my dirty counters and stove. So tomorrow, the only sort of book activity I have is just this Dora leapfrog pen one. Um, and we're doing that because they speak Spanish in Chile. And then I'll show you some sort of activities I set up at the table. So I'm gonna actually have them put all the countries in one of these notebooks. I had two extra notebooks. So what I'll get them to do is I'll, they can find the letter stickers and I'll have Tobias write his name here with the letter stickers. And then on each page, I'll get them to do same thing. Well, they'll find Chile with the letter stickers and then they'll go over to the flag and copy the flag, like draw it with the crayons. So they'll have a page in the front with Chile and then the flag. And then maybe on the last day, I'll get them to do like their favorite thing, like draw a picture of their favorite thing that we learned about. Maybe they'll draw mommy or whatever. Um, and so same thing for Alice. And then I'm gonna get them to try to make a penguin out of these, uh, I don't even know what you call these, these like shape blocks. So I'll get them to try to be creative there. So when they're done this, they can come over there and make a penguin. Today we've got these books about the beach, but it's actually to represent that Chile has the longest pool in the world. I got confused because I was doing Italy and Chile at the same time, and Chile, Italy is known for its beaches, but I have enough books for Italy. So I just pulled these out and explained to them it's actually the largest pool, and we read these ones uh, anyway. Some of them are cute. I like the Noni the Pony the best, probably, if you're going to pick one out of these. And by the way, for any of these that I've shown you guys, if you have a better mummy book or a better beach book or pool book or whatever, please leave it in the comments below so that everyone can benefit from that if they do decide to go ahead and do this for their kids for the week. I really like the uh, graphics in the, which one is it? No, I can't remember. So let me take a look here. Give you a little look through. Oh yeah, this one's cute. It just goes through different animals and what they do at the beach. This one was just a play on, you know, this little piggy goes to the market. This little piggy stays home. This little piggy has roast beef. It was okay, it was, it was okay. Um, this is the graphic one I like. So they're just really interesting. Like they're not your typical pictures. And then I'll just give you a look at Noni the Pony since I'm giving you a look at all of them anyway. It's pretty cute. My kids giggle at it, so it's like a really funny, cute one. So. 
We were seriously slacking on the Chile food this week. We ended up not making a couple of the meals. We got Pizza Hut and um, just made a couple other easy things. I just needed easy. I didn't want to do new recipes. So I will link them down below for you. There was empanadas and just some crepes. We're going to skip them for this week and head straight into Italy. So Thank you so much for watching this video today, guys. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and got some ideas for your homeschool or just some fun ideas for you to do with your kids while you're at home.